Last but not least is the part about the data size. And memory data size, database data size, compression and performance, all this is very connected. So let's start with the question, where do we find information about how big is our database? In the on-premise world with multidimensional, we can just click um, into the property and we can see this database is 1.6 GB. Now going into the tabular, and we are still on premises, this is where 100 million rows are. And the information of 23 megabyte is simply wrong. We cannot rely on this. Going into the cloud, looking into the same database, and right click, the information coming out is correct, 2.4 GB. Let's see the details from a very technical perspective. All this information is in dynamic management views that can be shown in DAX Studio where we connect to the database and these dynamics manage dynamic management views are here. But this is way too difficult for a user to know information about the table and create and extract data of. So for that reason, the guys from SQL BI offer a free tool, Vertipack Analyzer, where where actually this is a group of Excel files which you can download and uh, you change the connection. So you change the connection in Power Pivot and uh, that's all you have to do so that the model that was built on the top of this view is updated with the data that you put into this connection string here. So that is pretty much all you have to do. And now you have a lot of information. Now we have here a standard report which contains several uh, reports in the separate sheets but what this one is the most important all, all we did is change the connection and highlight the most important columns so we can see here are the tables this is the total table size 2.6 billion bytes these are the numbers of unique values this is called cardinality in each table and the table size is built by data size and dictionary size now going into the GL transaction we can see also the size for each column and we can say if we drop these two columns then the data size will be 20% smaller and uh, there are more details about this but I think this is the most important information that you may look for. So going back to our example of data transformation. So we have a source where the 100 million table is 63 gigabyte in size. When we bring this information to our data warehouse then we shrink data four times. So we are here and from data warehouse we take this into a tabular database. Now going from source Dynamics BC to data warehouse we shrink data which means we are not doing a compression. Now the easiest way to explain is that all the 52 columns in the GL transaction are here and we can see that most of the space is taken by the column tarp and varchar and actually this is very big waste of space. Now with, uh, with the data warehouse first we don't take all the columns but just only half of the columns and instead of using nvarchar as describing in a transactional table we're using dimensions with a dictionary in dimension and the uh, 100 million row has the information about the integer which is mapping to dimensional table. For that reason we shrink this data. On average the table si the row size is 650 because nvarchar has a max to 150 that four times. This is also shown here. From here on we have a true compression 6x which is actually not so much because cardinality of this uh, source is quite high. So the engine cannot use this algorithm very efficiently. Now looking into another situation, into another database where the information in the source is uh, the database in itself it's 1.4 GB and we bring this information to data warehouse is 1.4 GB actually it's a little more. Why? Because we add additional information that are good for querying in analysis services so we add additional uh, rows for inventory state, uh, receivables and payables, and additional aging information and so on. So that is just fine. But look into, let's say, more normal 
situation from data warehouse to tabular database we get 16x. So what is the conclusion about this transformation? Key parameters that affect data size are number of columns and type of the columns. And it's especially infor important for algorithm is how much can we compress data and higher cardinality means lower compression. And on the fourth spot we have the number of rows. By the data si type we try to describe everything by dimensions or we avoid date time as one dimension because that's very high cardinality or we can shrink the precision from 3820 which is usually in the transaction that needs 17 bytes going to 18.4 or 19.5 that would require only 9 bytes. Now another view in uh, analysis services is how much memory I need for uh, my subscription or how much memory my tabular uh, database or tabular engine needs. So the rule of thumb, the best rule of thumb is double the size of all tabular databases. So let me show how this works. So this is analysis services in the cloud where I was partially processing partitions. So with, uh, with the top value, this line here, presenting hard limit. This is how much memory I have and the other li line here is a lower limit showing me okay here it gets serious uh, which means the engine will take serious when requiring more memory different uh, cleaning mechanism will be included so that this is available like dropping other databases that are not active or, or doing some other things. So while I was processing 50% of the data 50 million it was okay. Then I was processing another partition of 12 million. You can see here, while we were processing, we needed space for current and all data. And then when it was done, the space was released. And another 12 million was in. And here I was aware of this hard limit not to be broken because it fails. And I was adding only 8 million, 8 million. And here, this was the last line where I was able to add. So in total, it was 87 million. And after that, it crashed. So this is just information that really this breeding or having the use of current and past information or database information in the same memory it's needed in order to provide information at the time of processing also to your users. So that's why it takes more space than you would usually need to park your database into the memory. This concludes this section.